ministering to you all for the last couple of days before we get into the to the main lesson let me remind you that my offer still stands sbs wants to send its bulletin sbs today to as many people as possible if you can gather email addresses of your family members and others from your church please do gather and give please give them to me couple of them have given me a couple hundred emails and there is one person who claimed as many as four bibles bibles are still available i brought a stack of them i have a lot many more in my room i forgot to tell you this is a reference bible there is you have reference in center column so if you help us to express our thanks we would pass on these bibles to you if there is anyone who doesn't have a copy of the study manual handbook there are a couple of handbooks lying on that table Yes this is King James version So we have handbooks and also let me remind you sibling for a member in your Sunday school or for passing on to others in your church you can pick up your complimentary copies of this handbook today SBS has been doing this for last 18 years we have been giving copies to anyone who is interested this because our ultimate aim is to encourage you to study the scripture as our memory verse or our theme verse goes all scripture is inspired by god and it is profitable for doctrine reproof correction instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works ultimately if we have to be thoroughly furnished we have to go back to scripture and before we turn our attention to page 16 of the study guide where we have lesson 3 i want to remind you once again the church has been here for the last 2000 years and any any group of believers who start with great commitment and enthusiasm eventually fall away from their faith that's natural because the sin nature that is inside us constantly fights against us it constantly tries to deviate us away from the scripture that's reason why in the last 2000 years we have seen hundreds upon hundreds of revivals hundreds and hundreds of uh, reformations in the world one of the most important reformations that took place in church history one took place approximately a century and a half ago at plymouth in england they were known as plymouth brethren another one equally important and today it stand stands as much more active than the plymouth brethren is the revival that came to kerala there was a revival in kerala around 1850s and the culmination of that revival was the arrival of what today we call as the brethren movement it happened 1899 when a couple of brothers from kerala they gathered together in the simplicity that the new testament prescribes for the church of god and that was the start of the brethren movement in kerala it's 110 plus years now and there is every likelihood we do see signs of falling away from our initial commitment our init- initial commitment to biblical principles and also our initial commitment to the scripture do you know that when the assembly movement started in plymouth and when the assembly movement started independently here in kerala we were known as people of the book i know it well because i have interacted with one of the 
first person who was baptized when the assembly movement started. I was 10 when he passed away. And he told me, when the assembly movement started, Malayalam Bibles were not easily available. Many families initially did not have Bibles. And Bibles were not compact like this. They were very large volumes and usually they would take a Bible, cover it, wrap it in clothes and this is the way they used to carry Bibles to the church. It used to be so heavy. And the man who did so told it to me first hand. It's not hearsay. But they were known as people of the book because they committed themselves to study the book like Bereans. They knew the book. They knew the book in and out. And there were many brothers among us, many Bible teachers among us who could quote practically any verse from anywhere in the Bible on any topic that you would ever or that you could ever ask. 110 years after that, today we live in a generation and in an era where a lot of people have become very cold in their faith. But I am sure that the young group that is listening to me today is not part of that, that group which has become cold in their faith. I hope, I am confident that you are part of that remnant which has always been there in the last 2000 years of the church history and who have kept faithful to the scriptures. And I want to, before I launch into the lesson today, I want to call you once again, my brothers and my sisters. If you call yourself a brethren, then stand tall for brethren distinctives. Because it is the brethren movement that discovered New Testament truths and taught it most clearly in the 19th and 20th century. Okay? Did you understand me? If you say that you are a brethren, you should be proud of it. You should be willing to stand tall for it. Shall we make a commitment for that? Okay? And as part of that commitment, let us go back to our lesson, main lesson once again. And all these lessons are based upon our key verses. All scripture is inspired by God and it is profitable for doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction in righteousness. And today we would like to draw our attention to instruction in righteousness. Now the word righteousness I accept is a very old word. We don't use it much except when we read the Bible. Righteousness actually means right conduct, proper conduct, proper thinking, proper attitude. So when you combine the right kind of thinking, right kind of speech and right kind of conduct, all of them put together is righteousness. And we in India are fortunate to be living in a land where even non-Christians are pursuing righteousness. I don't know how many of you have seen them face to face, but I am sure you have seen on television many sannyasis, many, many sannyasis. I am sorry about that. Third time in the last 10 years I was caught with a mobile that was not set on silent. Okay? So if this guy calls again, just silence it. Keep it. I have been brought up in the northern part of India where I have seen sannyasis who are trying to be righteous. There was one man very close to my school, he hung his tongue out. He would never pull it back. He would foam at mouth. He was unable to talk. 
and if he could ha- he could consume only liquid food food was ground into liquid form and then he would hold his tongue like this and pour the food the liquid food and swallow there was another sanyasi close to my college he raised his right hand like this and when i saw him for the first time it was already about 9 years and his hand had become dry like a dry twig on a tree i have seen sanyasis who lie on bed of nails they are all looking for righteousness and unknowingly many of us jump to the conclusion that they are righteous they are great people without realizing that the scripture divides human righteousness human good or good done by humans into two categories one that shall be burnt wood hay and stubble chaff and the other gold silver and precious stones gold silver and precious stones don't occupy much space the other one occupies a lot of space you can see it and you say oh wow but it's nothing tested by fire it's reduced to ashes all this righteousness that we see around is human righteousness that shall be burnt man by his human wisdom does not have the capacity to understand what is right that's the reason why the scripture says that we need to be we need to have doctrine we need to have uh, reproof and correction and then we need to have instruction in righteousness not from me not from the wisest guru in this world not from philosophers but from scripture all scripture is inspired by god and it is profitable all scripture is profitable not my instruction not your instruction then you may ask johnson uncle then why are you standing there speaking to us that's because god calls his children and some among his children to teach the scripture these teachers they have to study the scripture they have to wait in the presence of god to be illuminated by god 